Jets going inside. The running Jets out of Shot on goal. A game winner for the Cavs. A walk-off. Three-run shot from David Adams. Feeds right on the cut's back door. Up for the first layup. A shot. Billy Wade the score. Cavaliers start the offense behind the cage. Up the left by Rubio. Spencer scores. Rostad is free. She scores. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. After visiting here and meeting with the coaches, you know, it was a school that I fell in love with and uh, couldn't have picked a better place. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Cedric Pierman, number 37 on the football team. Before we get to the game stories in today's show, let's start with our play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. We make the American dream come true every day. John Phillips had a great spring um, in every respect. Special teams, performance, all aspects of the offense, catching the ball, running routes, blocking at the point, red area, First down, uh, terrific spring force, obviously recognized uh, by teammates, too, by their vote of him as captain. You know, he moves into the cleanup spot now. He's been in the lineup for three years, but he's not been the cleanup hitter. He moves into the cleanup spot now. He's seen how it's been done, and uh, his game has grown with it. Stay tuned. Virginia game highlights are coming up next. Welcome back to Cavalier Sports Weekly. Our men's lacrosse team hosted the Duke Blue Devils on Saturday. Let's check out the game story. The Cavalier Game Highlights are presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It was a great night for Virginia lacrosse, you know. Uh, the crowd, the atmosphere... bit too hyped you know coming in this game a lot of emotion and uh, I think it, it, uh, it just turned into a little bit of sloppy play um, for all around defense offense you know but I think we kind of calmed ourselves down I think the the leaders on our team kind of took control and, uh, and we were able to get back even with them score down. Uh, we played well for about for about five minutes there. And, um, it's about the only five minutes we played that well. We came out in the third quarter. I thought we got right back into it, uh, but they just they, they can score so quickly in such bunches that uh, you know what I said to them after the game was uh, we don't want to be pretty good. We want to be really good, and that team is really good right now, and that's where we got to get to. Face off X, Virginia trying to fight for it. Ince picks it up. Ince right to left. Ince top of the box. Left-handed cradle. Flips goal line extended left. Billings shot goal. Virginia answers right back. It's five to nine. It's Billings from seven yards out. Chanel has a short stick matchup of Michael Ward. Now left wing. A shot by Virginia. Goal! Peter Lomini. Wow, he hit that one from 15 yards away. Just pinpointed the upper right corner of the goal. Cavaliers still trying to clear. Barrow makes the catch right at the face off X. Cavaliers trying to go. Barrow down the right pipe. Barrow's got an opening. Barrow shot. Goal! We could create offense when we had the ball. Uh, we went from tying it finally to, you know, them being up five. It felt like in no time, you know. It's been a good one so far. Here's Gladding up the right pipe. Gladding pushed out. Gives to Giannone. Giannone low shot. Yes! He got it by Dan Rolfes, and Virginia has come back to tie the game.
the game, 8.31 to go, third quarter. Trying to get through a Duke player, has it knocked out of his stick. Picked up by Donowski, feeds Greer. Greer ducks under defender. Greer, shot, bottom left corner, bullseye. We got punched in the nose. It's not the worst thing that's ever happened to an athletic team. The question is, what do we do about it now? If we use this to measure ourselves and and decide that we're going to get better and... Uh, then uh, this could be uh, the most valuable learning experience out there. You know, it's not even the time of the year that people remember yet in our, in our sport. Uh, and so, with all the things considered, with the place being packed like this, uh, you know, I think it was a it was a heck of a day. This game didn't turn out quite the way we wanted to, but uh, I think there's a lot to be learned from this. Our football team finished our spring season with the spring game scrimmage Saturday, right here at Scott Stadium. Let's check out the highlights. We all felt that we had a positive day today. It was a positive day for the quarterbacks. Um, some good decisions. Um, each one in his own time made some good throws. Third down and long. Lollick in the pocket throws. Look. On, on many occasions, the quarterbacks did a, a real good job of seeing it open up the way that it should. We're trying to coach all three to, to determine the number one. And we probably haven't had very many out of eight where we've had three quarterbacks who perform to the level collectively that the three did today. We've emphasized hard during the course of the spring. Um, the, the, ter the term has been to win the battle for the ball. Of course, that starts on both sides, but that's just, you got to get your hand on the ball. you got to cause fumbles. you got to knock passes down. you got to defend passes upfield, um, obviously make interceptions. So players seem to be tuning into that and, and that was a positive thing um, that's my biggest impression of the defense we got our hands on some balls there's some looseness in the coverage but but we didn't play some things coverage wise that we otherwise might we also understand that, that we have a very challenging road in front of us okay we play you know we play a, a team that really in in the decade of 2000 is is in a league of its own to start the season. All four of our non-conference teams played in the postseason last year. What I am positive about is in, in practice 15, what, what this team could have gotten done to this point, we're pretty close to having gotten done. Jeremy Farrell started his career at the hot corner, but has made a successful transition over the first base. He comes from a real baseball family, and he's having a great season for the Cavaliers. Jeremy Farrell is your Student Athlete of the Week. Neither my mom nor my dad ever pushed us, me or my brothers. Uh, baseball's always just been something that we've always wanted to do. You know, I don't want it to sound like something I took for granted, but you know, it was definitely part of our life. You know, we, we talked about baseball a lot. You know, it was the basis of a lot of our conversations. You know, baseball has provided us a vehicle to communicate about a bunch of different things. Uh, challenges, accomplishments, uh, failures. Uh, but I think uh, that serves as a, as a thread uh, and certainly doesn't dominate everything that, uh, that we do. We're, we have interests outside the game. Uh, we talk about real life things, uh, you know, whether it's sitting around the dinner table on a Sunday night, which w has always been kind of our weekly centering point. Unfortunately, the nature of his job, he doesn't get to see me nor my brothers play very much. So a lot of our conversations are just that, talking about how our games went, what happened in this situation. And not only do we tell him, but he'll talk about his game too. So it's kind of, it's a unique dialogue that goes back and forth. Well, I think the one thing that uh, baseball has afforded us is a lot of different places to not only live and experience. Uh, at the same time, while it's, it's given us those experiences, it, it certainly can take us apart uh, as each of us in our family, the three sons that my wife and I have, as well as my own baseball schedule, can take us all over the country. But uh, the fact that he was playing in the Cape Cod League this summer gave us a chance to unite on a few occasions, whether it was in town on, a, on an off night that he might have or following a day game or an off game or an off day that I had. I could drive down to the Cape and spend some time, but I, I think the, the Cape Cod experience is just another step uh, and adds to the experience and the challenges that he faces at, at UVA, and uh, we couldn't be more happy uh, that the fact that he's been a member of the Cavalier program. UVA is the complete package. Uh, when I was looking, I wanted a strong academic school as well as a good athletic program, and uh, you know, after visiting here and meeting with the coaches, you know, it was a school that I fell in love with and uh, couldn't have picked a better place.
Or when he first stepped on our campus and we started recruiting him, and then he became a player for us, that um, you know his his baseball knowledge because of his background, because of his father, was very very advanced more than 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 more players that come here. Uh, but that also presents its challenges too, you know. Um, you know, because Jeremy's been in big league locker rooms and the environment he's been around, there, there can be times when a player feels more pressure to perform at a higher level because of expectations. I came in as, as a third baseman, uh, fortunate enough to be able to start and played quite a bit my freshman year. Uh, unfortunately, ran into a few injuries the past two years, uh, which has been frustrating, but uh, I feel like I've definitely learned and grown from those. To see a veteran player to, uh, to win our Iron Cavalier Challenge like Jeremy Farrell did is is really important. Uh, you know, it's mentally challenging, grueling. You're, you're going through it with your teammates, but I definitely think it pays off in the season when you know your body wants to quit on you, and uh, you know you can push through things with your mind. We would not be where we're at offensively without the contributions of Jeremy Farrell. What's made Jeremy great this year is is consistency. You know, he hasn't went through ups and downs this year. He's been very, very consistent offensively for this team all year long. And I think that's been a big boost for us, um, you know, uh, hitting in the middle of that lineup, um, somebody that can drive the ball to the ballpark, and it's going to give us a competitive at bat every time up there. Now, don't overthink things, whether it's at the plate, whether it's with schoolwork, whether, whatever you don't. Keep things simple. Coming up after the break, Arrow rips that one to left. They're going to wave McClatter around. Eichler picks it up, and his throw home will be cut off. It is 2 to nothing, Virginia. Welcome back to Cavalier Sports Weekly. Up next, we've got baseball, tennis, and more in our Olympic Sports Spotlight. The Olympic Sports Spotlight is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. They're going to wave McClatter around. Eichler picks it up, and his throw home will be cut off. It is two to nothing, Virginia. Coach stressed to us, let's jump on them early. And, you know, when, when we're on top, usually things, you know, our pitchers do a great job of, uh, of shutting the other team down. Three balls, two strikes, and a swing and a miss. Breaking ball off the outside. And the story of the game for me was Jake Cowan. You know, um, it all starts on that mound, and uh, he came out and pitched a great, great ball game for us, and we needed that. Swung on and missed. I felt my breaking ball was really working today, and then, you know, I was able to spot my fastball pretty well today also. Swing and a miss. A three-pitch strikeout from Cowan. Two on, and that one right to left center field. Another base hit. They're going to wave Smith around. The center fielder, Bailey, will just fire it onto the infield. An RBI double off the bat of Greg McClatt. Two outs, and the base is empty. The pitch is granted to the left side. Backing up is Patrick Wingfield. He's got to hurry the throw. Guns to first and got the out. And book this one to Virginia. I really felt like Jeff Lorick threw the ball well and gave us a good quality start. You know, unfortunately in the second inning we didn't make a couple of plays behind him and it extended the inning for uh, for Liberty. But you know, Liberty uh, took advantage of it. I reminded them, you know, after the uh, top of the second inning, uh, what our agreement in the outfield was last night um, after the game was that we'd come and play the game the right way and not play it like we've played the last two Wednesday nights. A base hit, they're going to wave Wingfield around. Jefferson comes up throwing. It's online. The slide is in time. He's safe. Uh, fortunately, they responded. You know, we got some big hits, um, some clutch hits, and, um, you know, and you know, pitched well the back half of the game. One. Binnick swings and lines one to the gap in left center field. It'll get down for extra bases. Scoring from third, David. I thought Cohen. Robert Morey uh, pitched some of the best baseball that he's pitched all year for us. Here we go, Mike. Let's go, boss. Let's go, dog. You know, ACC is such a tough conference that every time you go out there, it's going to be a tough team. And so, you, you know, you kind of have that extra juice, you know, ready to go. A lot of history with these guys. You know, we, we know most of them. You know, NC State's a really good team. You know, they've, they've had some tough breaks, but they're, they're pretty good. We have to be ready to play every match. 
You know, early on we had some trouble with the doubles points. You know, we probably just weren't as ready as we as we thought we were. And the teams are so good that anybody can beat us on any given day. So we just have to be ready to play. And the depth, I think, is what helps us the most. Is, you know, like today, Teddy, you know, not feeling great. So, you know, I came in and played, and I played pretty well. So it just depends on the given day. And if someone's injured, the depth is just what saves us, I think. In other Cavalier sports action this week, Today's show is our last episode of Cavalier Sports Weekly until the fall. So we'd like to take this opportunity to show you some of the best plays from another great year in Virginia athletics. High in the front court now, left wing to Zoll. Zoll looking back there for right. Oh, my goodness. Snap back. Ball down, the kick is up, it is long enough, it is good! Sean wants to run, Sean is going to take just inside, spins, oh what a move! Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly, and thanks for supporting all of our great athletic programs. I'm Cedric Pearman, and we'll be back in the fall, just in time for our season opener against Southern Cal. Until then, go Hoos! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. And brought to you in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 